Okay, so um, Anne and I have been asked to give a, a high-level summary uh, from our first three sessions today, and so we will do our best to give a quick sort of our high-level takeaways. I'm sure they won't match with everyone, but um, from session 1.1, where we talk to people who work in operations and uh, do risk communication on the day-to-day, uh, one of the big takeaways I saw was a big challenge in this risk communication is the noise. And the noise might not mean what we all think it, or at least what I thought immediately when I heard noise. Um, the noise here was the the kind of gee whiz statements or these TC vitals, which are these these uh, messages about the, the category of a, a tropical cyclone or the intensity, things that don't directly necessarily relate to local experienced impacts by people. And how do we sort of work towards making sure people are, are hearing the actual impacts and, and personalizing this information versus these, these really cool, but maybe irrelevant in the moment, uh, historical facts, like this is the first time this has happened, or this is the strongest tropical cyclone since X or Y. Um, another uh, element was to a really important part of this risk communication, especially dealing with um, with uh, less typical types of storms is laying this base foundation for communication among partners and how important that is. Um, I think that's probably something that has been studied pretty well uh, to date, but could always use more, more research. I know a lot of the work Anne's done with mental models, uh, risk communication and Julie DeMuth and Rebecca Morse. Um, but understanding these the communication flow with partners, if you have a good base communication, you can sort of pivot when you have these sort of unusual events. Um, and make those those messages a little clearer. And I, this, this is sort of my question that came away from it is, can impersonal graphics convey personal risk? And you can think of this on lots, lots of different ways in terms of scale. Can national scale graphics um, represent county scale or street scale risk? Um, or can graphics that like the cone that talk about where the track, the center is going to be, can that really convey where those impacts are? So. Well, this, this the second part is uh, really sort of a summary across the first two parts because we discussed some of what happened in the first panel. And also I should say that we should have asked Jen to do this because she had all the notes there on a slide. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we just need to grab that slide. So uh, there was a lot of emphasis throughout the first two panels on the speed and location of impacts. And we heard some of this also in the panel that uh, Marshall just, just uh, um moderated. There, there was discussion, a lot of discussion of intensification of wind and rates of rainfall in particular as examples of this, but also that there are different hazards in different locations for the same named event and often very localized. So it's very difficult to track that kind of dynamicism and important to track it because that's what people are experiencing. Among the researchers, we heard the need for more research on how information moves across platforms um, and how to leverage AI tools for good in these dynamic and evolving situations. So both the hurricanes and the tropical cyclones and, and all the associated hazards are, are evolving and dynamic, but the communication systems are too. And then there was a discussion, uh, Roxy mentioned particularly, a need for research infrastructure and support that can support pre-disaster studies and be agile for studying these kinds of rapidly intensifying or sudden real-time and dynamic events. And for social observational data, as Julie emphasized, we need monitoring and observational data analogous to what exists for the physical sciences to be able to track the dynamics and specifics, these localized experiences that people have and that are accumulating to, to determine their future responses. So one of the takeaways was this lovely quote about thinking beyond the zone, that we uh, really need to be able to understand the specifics and fluidity of these kinds of events to really understand what's going on cumulatively. So, um, and we we would like to leave a little time for people to get organized for the breakout. So Hugh, should we turn it over to you? Well, so I'm just, I'm, I'm going to stand in for Marshall really fast and, and talk about session two. Um, and unfortunately, I won't be able to do nearly as good a job as Marshall would have done, but I, I do have a couple of notes with his assistance here. Um, so thinking from session two, um, there were a, a number of really strong takeaways. I think that there are multiple ways to define a compound or cascading disaster and how we do has consequences for people. And as a result, the ethics around who's responsible for messaging and the classification of these events is, is complex and evolving. Um, hurricanes are multi-impact events. Uh, there are opening questions around how we convey that complexity. There are specific decisions that are made to focus on one hazard or another and, and what are the consequences of that. Um, thinking about benchmark storm, uh, benchmark storms, pardon me, um, and thinking about how they impact how people perceive other storms in their area, um, 
there's an opportunity to take a t um, uh, advantage of that uh, tendency that people have uh, to help with relative messaging moving forward. Um, thinking about our traditional messaging tools, graphics, and language, they may send mixed messages, particularly in some particular uh, cases. And a strong coordinated community is really key to help maintain that message consistency. And that consistent and nimble messaging is really needed because every storm is different, uh, and it, it can be different than people's previous experiences, particularly in the context of a new normal of increasing extremes. Uh, and with that, I'd like to transition really quick to Jeanette Sutton, who's going to introduce our next session uh, going into our breakout groups, uh, and then I'll have some instructions for people in the room. We'd like to thank all of the speakers in the first two sessions. They were fantastic.